Hello, everybody. <clears throat> How are y'all this fine afternoon? Hope y'all are doing well. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Grandmaster Level. That's real nice of you. Um, I appreciate you, uh, the super chat. Um, we'll see as far as the, bl uh, the blue wrench. That's uh, more. That's not really like a, a member thing. It's more of a a bit of a responsibility. But we'll see. You know, no telling going down the road. Um, I sure do appreciate the super chat, though. Uh, as y'all know, we're continuing on with the trial. Um, the date, I can't remember what the date is. Anyway, it's the same day. We, we're going to take off at 4 o'clock. Um, I'm not sure what all goes on the rest of this, so uh, we're going we're gonna to watch it together. Um, I'd like to wish every, all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Um, mine has been pretty decent. We went and had, uh, uh, Chinese buffet for lunch and I'm still about half full. <laughs> That's been, it's already been about three hours ago, but, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's give the next one a watch. Do you remember roughly when the baby's hair was cut? I don't know, sometime this year. Oh. Okay. Did um did did anyone at our house cut his hair? No. Okay. And how many haircuts has he had this year? A few. Okay. Um at your at your house, and based on your observation and knowledge, experiences, um does does the baby ever complain about his hair? Does he ever make a fuss about his hair? When your observation when, uh, oh. Whenever I'm combing the hair, of course he is fussing because the, the hair is not dead, of course. He's going to fuss with okay. the baby. And then, um, does the baby ever, um, he doesn't talk, but, does he ever do any signals that he wants his hair to be cut? And you, based on your observation. On a 19-month-old, mm -hmm. how are you going to interpret that? <laughs> Morty, thank you for the super chat. Yeah, how, how are you going to interpret that? He, uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. Right. I now mean, we're he, getting into real he, speculation, trying to interpret whether or not the baby's signals mean he wants his hair cut. Right, does he ever act uncomfortable? Yeah, it's insane. They'll say anything. Woo. Like, does, he, does his hair ever indicate that he's uncomfortable with it? Well, that's, that's, just too, no, that's just too vague. This is just very vague, very conclusory, very speculative. Ridiculous. Okay. Thank you. She, she can certainly testify that when she has to come out knots, he's fussy about it because it yeah. hurts. That she can testify to. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honor. No further questions. Cross? Yes, sir. This ought to be good. JoJo? Laura? Yes, uh, I'll pick up where we left off. I think you testified that the words were every time. Mm -hmm. That the child comes back from Nick's custodial time, that he has diarrhea. He does have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. But looking through the the exhibits that were provided, I see one record of of treatment for diarrhea from December 18, 2018. It's the record you testified about. Has he ever gone? To, uh, is there is, are there other medical records out there that you know of from other visits for diarrhea, or is it just the one from a year ago? We always treat with the medication that he has. That's strange. I'm not sure. Uh, it's flat green at Yahoo. I'm not sure. That, does, that doesn't quite make sense. Let me see what I can find out. We treat him. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. But I'm asking, other than the, the, the one record from a year ago, has he ever gone to see a doctor because of this diarrhea that you claim he has every time? This time, the, just this last week, he had diarrhea, yes. He had to go to, when he had the bed, uh, bed um, the eczema, 
there was a diarrhea too that was there, a, a stringy mucusy diarrhea. So you're saying that the record that we didn't get served with, that, that was for diarrhea too? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought you said it was for diaper rash. That's why I'm just trying to... I'm asking, other than the December 18, 2018 medical record, do you know of another time when he went to a medical provider to be treated for diarrhea? Yes, been yes, good. We didn't, we, probably she didn't put it in, but yeah, the baby has been going to... Uh, oh. Because every time he goes, he, there's a diarrhea, there's a diaper, so... Either we use the medication that we already have in the fridge, or okay. Okay. so I'm a mother. I know how to treat my own children. So it sounds like you're very involved in caring for this child. Is that correct? I am involved because I live with them. Right. And Karen, Karen lives with you, correct? Yes. Does Karen pay you rent? Objection. What? Relevance. Does Karen pay you rent? All, all out, it goes to um, the economic um, issues with regard to the party and the FDF on file. Okay. It does. She it does. does. Mm -hmm. How much a month is she paying rent? Four hundred something, just for the rent and not including utilities. So she she also pays for some of the utilities. Of course, we all share. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how much does she pay you for uh, child care? Anything? I don't know what you're asking. Mm -hmm. I'm just no, asking you, do. you, pay you for, don't know what you should answer. For all your help with caring for Julian. I am Julian's grandmother, so I'm. I'm not. For me, I'm not gonna allow for. Uh, uh, to He's pay. just asking. I'm you're just not asking. paid anything for yeah. child care, correct? I'm not paid. Okay. All right, there's a stack of Thank you. exhibits there. On the front page, there's like a chart that says Ravello v. Sanguaza exhibit line here. Do you see that? Up there? Yeah, yeah. And it's numbered 1 through 21. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right, I want to direct your attention. It's the very first exhibit. It's a, exhibit 1 has previously been admitted okay. in today's proceedings. <coughs> And I want to direct you to the very last page of that exhibit. So you'll see a green page that says Exhibit 2. It's the page right in front of that Exhibit 2. Page. The very last yeah. page of, it, of Exhibit 1. Mm -hmm. okay, you, have you ever seen this image before? What do you mean? The very last page, it should say oh, no. 11.05 a.m. at the top. The very last page of the first exhibit. Oh, okay. You see that? 11.05, I don't see where it's 11.05. Right at the very top of the middle, it says 11.05 a.m. Ah, see. It's a screen cap from a cell phone. Oh, you see that? She's trying to get to the top of the page. Oh, it's oh. It's the way the... There's the clip. The clip's in the way. Clip in the yeah. Way. That, that makes sense, actually. I apologize. I needed a really big clip. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Exactly. All right. And do you see under there, under 11.05 a.m., you see where there's like, it looks like an email address? Yes. And is that your email address? Uh, I'm not so sure. I know I can see my name there, but... Uh, is, is E-T-I-N-A-S-A-N-G-A-L-A-Z at iCloud.com, is that an email address that you've used? I, I don't use that email. Have you ever used that email address? Objection, Your Honor. That I don't. witness already answered that she doesn't No, I don't. she didn't. I, I, she I don't she doesn't use it, now he's saying, did you ever use it? No, I never used this email. I, I use a yeah. Gmail. Thanks, Morgan. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you ever exchanged text messages with Nick Ravel? Long time ago. Okay. All right. Well, do you do you recognize this as as text nice. messages that you exchanged with Nick Ravel a long time ago? I, I I I I cannot tell you because a long time ago when he, he blocked my email, you know, long time ago when they were having issues. So I cannot I cannot tell you. Okay. But it's possible that 
I cannot say it's possible because I don't know. I don't know. She answered the question. She says she doesn't know. I don't know. It's irrelevant whether it's possible or not because she can't answer that question. Sustained. Yeah, I think so. Just choose not to when it's convenient. Well, let me just ask you this: Did did you ever did you ever bring up the concept of a dowry with Nick Rebella? Never. Never. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you ever indicate to Nick Rebella that he was going to owe your family lots of money? I don't know what you're talking about. She didn't answer. It's a different question overruled. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever indicated to Nick Ravello that he was going to owe your family money because he had gotten your daughter pregnant? I don't know what you're talking about. I are, don't know. are you familiar with the concept of a dowry? Maybe. I don't know what what is dowry. Objection, Your Honor. He's asking her to answer a question. Like, I'm asking something you one moment. One no, moment. I'm asking she answered the I question. One know. moment, ma'am. She answered the question, so move on. I have no further questions. Okay. Redirect? Um, no redirect, John. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please leave the exhibits there. You're free to step down. Don't discuss the testimony that you gave on the stand yeah. with any other witness in the case, okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I just want to see that go a little, a little longer. Okay. Yeah. She said no further witnesses. She said no further witnesses. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. So, do you wish to do any rebuttal well, other than investigating the alleged um, November 18th report? Yeah, no, may I, um, do I get a chance to go to testify as well? Thanks, Rex. That's your witness. So, if you oh. want to take the stand, that's okay. why I was. Okay. So, Sorry. you do Please. want to take the stand? Yes. I okay. Do. That whole thing. That's what I was trying to figure out. That, I, that's why Mr. Life will stop because he's just yeah. going to determine whether he was going to call you right. in the rebuttal. So, all right, you can take the stand. Okay. This right. should be good. Can I take my documents? Mm, are they already up? Are they the same exhibits? Yeah. Then you should use the exhibits that are there, then the clerk's exhibits, okay? Okay. Yeah. You can solve your testimony about to give in this action show you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, if you got it? Yes. Okay. What would you like to say? Okay. Um, so, um, actually, I wrote down, I wrote down like everything, points that I wanted to. Am I allowed to use those or no? It's just things I wanted to say. I'll allow it, provided that's all it is. is I mean, you it's can't just, just read from a statement. You have to testify. Right. It was just to help me keep track of, you know, the things that I was going to bring out. Well, see, here, this is where we get into this difficulty, and it comes up all the time in pro se yeah. cases. So Thanks, I, I need to be able to make objections to preserve my record. And without questions being posed, right, the all. The only objections that I can make are basically motions to strike, motions to strike. Correct. Right. If she's got sort of written testimony, right, then it would seem to me that the that the proper mechanism for that, the only thing that I've ever seen work in these cases, is for her to put that into an affidavit and and then have and, and then give me an opportunity to review it ahead of time and make objections to certain portions of that affidavit or to prepare impeachment right, examination me, on those Let points. me see what it is you wanted to take to the stand. Yeah. Can you hand it to the marshal? Yeah, it's kind of strange. Exactly.
Just Shelly, thanks for the gifted memberships. I sure do appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, what I've been shown is a very extensive typed statement, um, and it isn't just reminder notes. So the answer is no. You have to give your testimony um, on the points that you want to make, um, and we we'll make a copy of that simply for the record. Put it on the left side, or a, and that'll be. Uh, so we don't have to use it. I mean, I can just... Uh, well, yeah, I but I'm making it. a record in case you ever object to the fact that I didn't let you use oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll just make that a court's exhibit for demonstrative purposes of my ruling number two. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, just the beginning when I met the plaintiff. Okay, so at the time, um, it was my uh, summer break. Of my junior year. I'm surprised you want to uh, break out with it. it. Was the best of times? It was the worst of times. College. Um, I was working downtown. Um, I was working two jobs at a restaurant, and then at night I was working um, at this new like hip bar that had opened up. Um, and so me and my uh, coworker, we were at the bottom. Um, of the, uh, we were checking guests in that were going in, um, and so then what happened was the plaintiff approached us, and then he began um, flirting, and me and my coworker, we didn't really, enter we didn't entertain it at all, like we, we were at work, we really didn't want um, anything to do with that. And so then um, the plaintiff asked me for my phone number, and I refused to give him that, I did give him um, social media. Um, and so later on, he contacted me on social media, um, and uh, he was persistent with messages, messages, messages. And then finally, I decided, okay, fine, I'll you know talk to this person. Right. Um, and so we decided to go to meet. Um, at the first time, I didn't, uh, I didn't meet, I didn't go to meet him because I just wasn't unsure. The second time, um, after he had brought it up that I didn't go to meet, uh, he—that's where I understand it. He he mentioned it, and I finally said, "Okay, I'll go." So I went, um, and then um, we we developed like a um, a connection, um, and after that, we decided to uh, pursue a relationship. And so, um, since it was my summer break, and he knew that, he asked me if I wanted to go visit um, his home, where he's from. I was under the impression that he lived in Las Vegas, and um, you know he was going back to visit home, which was Wisconsin. Um, and it was supposed to be for a week. And I told him, "Yeah, um, I'll go visit. You know, since I'm on summer break, summer break, might as well." So we went to visit, and yeah. then um, while I was there, it, would, it came time for me to leave and to go back home um, and so I told the plaintiff uh, you know it's time for me I need to go back you know like my plane ticket and all of that um, to return home and then he didn't want me to leave he asked me to stay and um, since I had started college I hadn't taken any uh, breaks off I decided okay I can uh, take I can take a semester off and you know just explore and do just see see where this will go and so I decided to go back home and then um, get some of my things so I can spend the semester over there on the agreement that it was only going to be a semester. Um, soon after, that's when I became pregnant. Um, I'd never been pregnant before. I didn't... No, they know what causes this condition. They, they've got this one. They know exactly what causes it. You know, it was completely unplanned. I didn't know what to do, but I knew my stance in terms of um, whether or not I was going to keep the baby or not. And um, well, I, I I just I decided I wanted to yes. keep the baby because that's uh, my values and beliefs. And so then um, I decided. I mean, at the time, I barely even knew the plaintiff that well. Um, I didn't know anything about him. He had told me a bunch of things, which later on were proven to be untrue in terms of um, what he does for a living um, 
and just him in general. Like I didn't, I didn't know it was so early on. And so I stuck it out um, from the summer of 2017 uh, until December of 2017 when I, um, I, when I was at his house in Wisconsin, he never had food in the house. Um, I was pregnant, mind you, at the time, and every time I'd try to wake him up, he wouldn't want to go grocery shopping. Um, and I would reiterate to him, hey, I need to eat, you know? The doctor said, I need to eat. And so... Alan Scott, thanks for the gifted memberships. I sure do appreciate it. Um, I would call my parents all the time and tell them, hey, this is what's going on. I, I don't... You know, I'm in this place by myself. I don't know what to do. Um, and so they would try to talk to him on the phone. Most of the time he would evade talking to them on the phone. But they knew the situation. We'd FaceTime all the time. Um, and so I, like, my health was kind of deteriorating. So I decided at that time that it was, I needed to go back home. Like, it, I wasn't healthy and I was pregnant. Um, and I was, I was barely showing too, which was a big concern. And so when I talked to the doctor in Wisconsin, you know, I told him all of that and he, he, you know, he was like, okay, cool, good idea, you know, like, okay idea, um, to go home. And so, um, I, I re like, I spoke with him and spoke with my parents. He didn't want to let me go back home. My parents got really concerned about that whole situation. Um, of him trying to keep me at his uh, at his house when I you know kind of like against my will when I wanted to go back. Um, finally, they had to like threaten police, and he finally said, "Okay, uh, I'll let her go. You know, I'll let her go back home." I wasn't working at the time either, so I didn't have any money, and so um, my car was also in the shop. What happened was, uh, my car needed coolant. And he decided he wanted to, he's not a mechanic, he decided he wanted to change the coolant tube in my car, and uh, the coolant in my car, and he snapped the tube. My car was in the shop from that summer until December when I finally got my car back. Him and his aunt kept telling me that my car is going to be ready next week, your car is going to be ready next week. And for some reason, I, I wasn't, I really wasn't um, convinced and I wasn't comfortable, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but after the uh, police, uh, well my parents threatening police and all that. Magically, I got I finally got my car. I got my car and um, uh, packed all my stuff into the car and we drove back to Las Vegas. And so um, when we drove back to Las Vegas, he didn't spend 24 hours here. Um, we went straight to my parents' house. He didn't spend 24 hours. Right when I got there, um, he, he left. He said that he, need, he needed to go on a flight back to Wisconsin, mm -hmm. which of which he went. Um, and so my parents helped me unload my car and put everything back into their house. And um, I re-enrolled back into my, um, you know, semester at school since I had taken a semester off. And I went to school and I was working part-time as well, I was so pregnant. And then the plaintiff finally told me that he had changed and he was different. Um, because prior in Wisconsin, all he wanted to do all night was party, um, do drugs with his friends and just hang out and be out. And so I was stuck in his home by myself um, in a place that I didn't know with people I didn't know. Um, and I was just was isolated in his house. Um, I, I maybe met some of his friends like once or twice here or there, but not anyone that I could say I'm developing any friendships or any anything like that with them. Hey, darling. So, um, when I was back here, I was working, going to school, getting ready for um, my baby to come. The plaintiff said he was changed and he was different. Um, for a few weeks while he was here, he didn't have a, a place to stay. He was homeless, like he was going from hotel room to hotel room. And I kept telling him, you need to get a place to stay. You need to get a place to stay. You can't, you know, stay in the hotel room. And he was playing poker, drinking every night, going out with his friends. Oh. Finally, um... We finally decided to go look at apartments. We signed a lease at um, Inspire. Um, I paid my part of the deposit. He paid his part of yeah. the deposit. We were both on the lease, and so was his aunt. His aunt was on the lease because he didn't have a job. I had a job, but it didn't prove enough income. Um, so his aunt decided to go on the lease. And so um, with that, I had access to rent ledger. Um, and I noticed that he, his aunt was paying for the apartment. And when I confronted him about it, he would say that he was paying for it, lying to me. And I knew he was, but I decided to, you know, 
allow him to say what he had to say so that um, um, just just to, to say what he had to say but I knew that he wasn't telling the truth based on my access to the rent ledger um, and so then um, I, I didn't really stay at that apartment like I, I was kind of on and off on and off between there and my parents house um, because he was always out all night. Um, for a long time we didn't even have furniture in the apartment. Um, and so I stayed with my parents for most of the time. When um, we finally, when he finally went to Wisconsin to get his furniture, since he didn't want us to get new furniture here, um, my parent, he called up my parents and we moved everything into the um, apartment, of which my parents did most of the moving. And um, for us because I was I was very pregnant but I, I helped out as well he didn't really help out as much um, and then uh, so everything was moved in um, and then the baby was born April 2018 April 25th your honor, um, your honor I'm going to make a motion to strike everything that has been said <laughs> up until the baby was born as irrelevant your honor may respond oh, it is Perfect. Let her just go and go and go and go and go. And then last minute, all of that's irrelevant. Can we strike every bit of that? That right there, it it, it is just a poke at her. That is all it is. Because the judge, he knows it's useless. And he knows the judge don't care about any of that. So he did that just to poke at her. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and so... Um, the baby was born April 25th, 2018. Um, prior to him being born, I set up, I, I didn't work full time, so I couldn't um, get health insurance through the company I was working with, but I did get health insurance um, through the state, uh, temporary for the baby. Um, and then, so I set that up um, for him, and then all, all, all doctor's visits after he was born, I took him by myself. Um, so he was born in the hospital, in the delivery room. Well, I was in labor for 20 hours. In the delivery room, for all 20 hours was, well, for most 24, 20 hours, was um, my parents, my sister, my best friend. Um, he, was in, he was there as well. Um, and then after the baby was born, my, oh, no, I'm sorry, during, during labor, um, my parents, uh, pastor and their wife came to visit, you know, they came to see us, um, brought us food too, because we've been there for 20 hours. And so, baby was born, I was moved to the hospital delivery room, and, um, that's when I learned that his mom has, had landed in Las Vegas, and she came to the, um, hospital room the following day, um, with her friend that I had seen one time. I'd never officially met her or anything like that, but I'd seen her, um, and so I felt really uncomfortable that there was this woman in a hospital room that I didn't even know, you know. But thankfully enough, they didn't really stay that long. And um, so I was discharged two days later. I saved, oh, I asked for an extra two days. What happened was um, when the baby was born, I never, I, n I didn't have any kids of my own. So I was really uncomfortable when it came to feeding him. He didn't pee for 24 hours, so I was concerned with that. And so I asked the nurse if she would allow me uh, to stay another day. And they said usually they don't because of health and in health insurance purposes and all that. And I had state health insurance myself. And um, But they said that I could stay another day just so I can be around the nurses to make sure everything's okay. Part of that reason was because the plaintiff, while I was in the hospital room the whole time, he har had harassed me so bad to the point where I told him I didn't want him to be on the birth certificate. He, would, he was t sell telling me threats, you know, if I didn't put him on the birth certificate, this, this, and this would happen, and um, all this stuff, and I didn't feel comfortable. Actually, um, the head nurse at the time, she came into the room um, after I was crying, and she asked me, like, what happened, what's going on, and I had to lie to her and tell her I'm fine. Um, so then... Um, one of the nurses in the room while my parents were there, um, I had talked to my parents and I told them I don't want to go uh, to the apartment by myself. I don't feel safe, I don't feel comfortable, and I don't know what I'm doing. And so, um, and I asked them, can I stay with you guys for a few weeks until I at least know what I'm doing or get a grasp of things because I don't feel comfortable with the plaintiff um, being around the baby. Um, the nurse was there present for that conversation and my parents actually asked 
her opinion. They asked her, like, well, they, you can't testify okay. as to what the nurse said or your parents asking their opinion okay. or those kinds of things. Okay, thank you. So she, um, uh, okay, so that happened. Um, uh, I eventually came to the decision that I um, wanted to. I'm, I, I'm of the opinion that absolutely everything that revolves around this lady is about her. No one else is is the star of the show. It's all her 24-7. To stay with my parents because I felt better that way. Upon, uh, and I felt, I felt a great amount of pressure after threats to put him on the uh, birth certificate. Even his mom wouldn't leave the room until I signed his name on the uh, um, on the birth certificate. We finally got discharged and I um, went with my parents into their car because they had the car seat ready and everything. We went home to their house um, and we stayed over there and the plaintiff I mean, he had that open door and opportunity to come over and see the baby whenever he wanted. He knew where they lived, but instead he would often choose to uh, go out with his friends or go play poker or whatever he called working. And so I took care of the baby by myself the first few weeks of his life, you know. I got to know my baby, got to learn to be a Do you remember roughly when the baby? So the baby was born. As irrelevant. Yana may respond. Denied. <clears throat> okay. Um. And so. Um. So then um, one of the nurses in the room while my parents were there, um, I had talked to my parents and I told them I don't want to go uh, to the apartment by myself. I don't feel safe. I don't feel comfortable. And I don't know what I'm doing. And so there we go. Um, and I asked them, can I stay with you guys for a few weeks until I at least know what I'm doing or get a grasp of things because I don't feel comfortable with the plaintiff um, being around the baby. Um, the nurse was there present for that conversation and my parents actually asked her opinion. They asked her like, well, they, you can't testify okay. as to what the nurse said or your parents asking their opinion okay. or those kinds of things. Okay, thank you. So she, um, uh, okay, so that happened. Um, um, I eventually came to the decision that I um, wanted to stay with my parents because I felt better that way. Upon uh, and I felt I felt a great amount of pressure after threats to put him on. Even his mom wouldn't leave the room until I signed his name on the uh, um, on the birth certificate. We finally got discharged, and I um, went with my parents into their car because they had the car seat ready and everything. We went home to their house. Um, and we stayed over there. And the plaintiff, I mean, he had that open door and opportunity to come over and see the baby whenever he wanted. He knew where they lived, but instead he would often choose to uh, go out with his friends or go play poker or whatever he called working. And so I took care of the baby. Whatever when he called working. But you sure do want him to pay child support from that whatever he calls working. Uh, that's kind of troubling, troubling to me myself the first few weeks of his life you know I got to know my baby got to learn to be a mom and then um, May 21st came um, and that was when I was supposed to go back to the apartment um, on that day we went to the apartment um, with my no, parents and um, you know, they got everything situated. Like we had this talk about uh, rotating. Like usually, new parents um, share 
uh, a schedule, like every two hours or something, someone stays up with a baby. And so we had agreed upon all of that. Um, we even wrote down a little schedule. My parents were like, okay, we're going to leave, we're going to go home. They went home. And so that night, the plaintiff didn't want to... I'm sorry, it, this was before May 21st. Um, this was like a week before May 21st. So my parents, um, they... We, we did all that whole schedule, and then um, we saw that, well, actually, that night he didn't want to stay up with the baby at all. When I confronted him about it, he said that he needed to sleep more. He needed, he needed his sleep, and I explained to him, I'm a new mom, I just gave birth to a baby, you're not going to help me take care of your own child, like watch your own child, he didn't want to do it. So I went back home. May 21st came, and I decided to give it another shot. We went over there to the apartment. Um, and so there was a disagreement between me and the plaintiff um, on terms of him watching the baby for a few hours. Um, and this was after my parents had left. But him watching the baby for a few hours, and um, he didn't want to. And so he began getting like, uh, I don't know, his, his attitude changed, his tone, his behavior, everything like that. And he um, jumped off the balcony. He came back to the apartment with police. And um, police told me, they knocked on the door and they came in, they said, why are we here? And I said, I'm not sure, why are you here? And so um, they explained to me that the uh, plaintiff had called the police because he wanted me out of the apartment. Um, and I and I didn't know what to do. I was, I'm there, I just had a new baby who's like three weeks, you know, he's very young. Um, and then so the Metro told me that they can't, they can't tell someone to live, leave an apartment if the person's um, belongings are over there. And um, they, they told the plaintiff, well actually they asked me if there was any drugs involved because the plaintiff was behaving paranoid. I'm getting a whole, a whole lot of hearsay here. Sustained, you can't, since he's now objected, um, you can't say what the police told you. Okay, fair. Okay, so um, police came, um, and then the result was um, the plaintiff packed a suitcase and he um, decided to leave. Um, at that time, I was on FaceTime with my dad because he wasn't there, but my mom was. Um, and so he, he left. Later on in the day, he came back to the apartment after he had chosen to voluntarily leave. Came back to the apartment with three of his friends, um, and then he... He, he, there were, they came into the apartment, saw that I was there, and tried to get me to leave. My parent, my mom was there, and um, as she mentioned in her testimony earlier, um, she said, call the police, and that's when they all left the apartment, they all ran. Um, and so they were downstairs, this is the, the apartment was on the second floor, they were downstairs, we were on the balcony looking at them, and they were walking around, you know, threatening, in a very threatening manner. And so my mom sent him a text message, as she mentioned in her testimony, um, asking him why he had bought, brought three big men, um, and she, uh, why he had, she had, he had brought three big men against one woman, with, who just, I just, her daughter, who just had a baby. And his response was because he didn't listen. And so that, to me, sent, you know, fear and all that. And so I went and I filed a police report of the whole situation, which I, I, um, which I've, uh, so, uh, sorry, submitted in one of my exhibits. But I didn't feel safe, you know, like that hasn't been admitted into it. Okay. You want to identify it and try to admit it, mm -hmm. but it's simply your statement to the police, correct? Okay. So Can we? It has no relevance if it's just what you reported to the police. You've testified as to what you did and what happened. Okay. So I felt I felt that threat and a threat, and I went and yep. filed a police report. Um, and so um, the plaintiff had a key to the apartment where he could come any time. And actually, he would come to the apartment, but not to see the baby. He would come to um, uh, get his stuff, more of his stuff. Um, and so these uh, messages have have been submitted in the past. So if you can take a judicial notice of past messages as well, no, if you can? No, I can't take judicial notice of past messages. Okay, so... Uh, if you want to identify them, these are the ones that have already been identified and admitted? No, no. There, are, there are others. Okay, then you'd have to lay the foundation and move for their admission. Okay, 
Um, that's okay. I, I had asked the plaintiff, um, is he going to come see the baby? Is he going to um, send any diapers? Is he going to send anything for the baby, any money, anything? Um, didn't didn't respond, didn't do it. Um, and so the financial burden of the baby was on me. I had to take care of him by myself. Um, neither of us were paying the rent in that apartment. It was his aunt. And so I didn't have a job at the time. My parents came over to the apartment every single day to make sure that we had enough food um, and to make sure that we had some company. Um, but at the end of the um, at the end of the day, they would obviously go back to home to their to their house. Um, but they would come whenever every single day. After my mom got off work, she would be there. Um, when my dad didn't have work, before and after work, he would be there. Um, for us. And so one day, June 13th, I believe, I received um, papers that were served to me um, at the door. And it was a complaint for child custody. And I was surprised, you know, I'm like, you have a whole key, key to come to the apartment. Come see the baby whenever you want. Um, and you can, you can at least ask about how he's doing or anything like that. But there was this complaint that said that I was keeping him from the baby. And so um, we finally went to court about that whole um, matter. And uh, Notice that at certain times she's looking up, facing everybody, and then other times she's looking down like she just did then, like saying I was keeping him from the baby. You know, uh, that could be a tell. Um, eventually, it came to... Um, he had to complete a parent, eventually, no. I think so. Yeah, eventually came that he had to complete a, um, a parenting class before or making um, it visitation difficult for him because to I was generally concerned about So I think that's the problem. She's, she's saying that he can come visit the baby with her, and that's visitation. Well, he's wanting to come get the baby and the baby visit him. And uh, it, it seems like you weren't allowing that about the baby and I've mentioned this before also in previous hearings he there was one time where I caught him trying to stuff a blanket in the baby's mouth and when I confronted him about that I asked him what are you doing and he said the baby won't stop crying um, and that Thank concerned you. me you know I didn't feel safe with um, Andrew. with that like the leaving the baby with a person with that type of mindset because that's not how you soothe a baby and um, at the time I didn't um, I didn't I wanted to go with a um, route of not giving the baby a pacifier since I was breastfeeding. He was very young, slowly breastfeeding. Um, and so I can just put him on the breast and that helped me. Um. So whenever he's hungry, you have a way to pacify him, right? And then, but when the father has the baby, he has no way to pacify him, huh? Um, identify whether or not he was hungry, um, whether or not he needed to be changed, his cries. And so, um, I didn't want to do that because then I wouldn't be able to put a pacifier because then I wouldn't be able to identify his needs. Um, and so the blanket incident happened. And so when I brought that up to the judge, that's when she ordered um, that he take a parenting class before he um, began visitation, just so that we're safe, that he knows how to handle an infant. Um, his visitation began before he completed the parenting class because his lawyer went and um, filed a motion for him to begin earlier. Um, I, I, I opposed it because I didn't feel that it was right. Like you, to, because he doesn't have anyone here in Las Vegas, like no family that can help him, you know, guide him towards how to take care of a baby or anything like that. My parents had offered, he refused um, their help. Um, and so the why? Um, I didn't I just didn't feel comfortable with it. Judge recognized that. He started taking his parenting classes and then he started visitation before it finished. Um, he was ordered to submit to file the certificate for the completion of the class. He failed to do that twice. Um, and then finally in Gentile's courtroom, um, she asked him where's the certificate and he showed a picture of it that was on his phone. So he never actually filed a, um, a certificate of completion. Um, but she took it, she accepted it. Um, and then the visitation began and the, um, but it wasn't even comes overnight or a full day or anything like that. But I saw that he was not taking care of treating, taking care of the baby properly. Um, and so 
he would he would go times not feeding the baby. Um, he would say that he doesn't have any food, or he would say that he didn't change the baby's diaper, like outwardly say all these things, or that he objection or say it would be a statement of the party opponent. So overruled. Okay, so he would um, say all of those things. Say he's not feeding them. Um, changing his diaper, and that was yeah, concerning to me. Sure I brought this evidence up in front of the judge. The judge didn't um, consider it at all. She completely disregarded it. And then that's a mistake. This judge is going to know the other judge would not just disregard this. She knows she's not hearing some part of it. That that is a mistake. You never go to one judge and complain about another judge. It ain't going to help you. They know better. And ordered us to do a two-two-three. Um, um, arrangement, even despite me providing substantial evidence. And so 223 began, and um, you know, I, I've, I've had to go through with it, like I have had to go with it, but it's not, it's not the, it's not a good arrangement because for one, I'm choosing to do a baby led weaning when it comes to breastfeeding. He's still one. He's still, um, he's still very small. And I, I want him to be able to benefit from that um, for sure. He doesn't feed 24 seven or anything like that. He doesn't feed overnight or anything like that, but it is also a supplement because I don't give him cow's milk since he has that allergy. Um, don't give him any formula or anything like that. So I'd rather just give him- the testimony um, about an allergy that there's absolutely no- I provided sustain. medical records, the ones if that- If the medical records show there's an allergy, then I will take it into consideration. Mm. Okay. But no, I don't no, allow no, you no. to tell now, if there's not an allergy, you're going to take that in consideration. Testify that he has an allergy if there's no medical documentation to support it. Okay. And medical documentation is not you telling the doctor, it's the doctor diagnosing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've I provided medical records. I'll look and see. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. And so, um, I, um, as a mom, I decide that's... That's just the best route for my child. It helps him a lot. It's beneficial to him, and it also creates that bond. Um, and so, um, with that two, two, and swapping weekends, it's hard because he goes away, you know, five days at a time. It's hard because he's young. He's so young. He's one. He can't come back and say, hey, this is what we did for this week, or this, this is what happened. Um, he can't speak. I'm going to translate that for you. No matter what he says, you try to use it against him, so he's quit telling you anything. That's a smart thing to do. For himself, but one thing that does speak for the baby is um, the condition that he comes back in. But his body isn't going to lie. Um, and actually, um, when I confronted the plaintiff a few times about the uh, condition of the baby or the health, he's always argumentative about it, um, instead of saying, okay, I'll take care of him, or okay, um, he he always has an argument with it to make it seem like it's my, my, um, my it's my doing. The baby's sick yeah. or I'm not taking care of because of me. So, I, I understand. The, this is a narrative I, that's I getting carried away. Yes, well, and I understand, I understand the, the, the admission of a party exception to the hearsay rule. However, since before visitation or since before my client started exercising custodial time in this case there has been an order in place in this case that all communications are to be on talking parent the talking parent records have been admitted today i i do object to these extraneous statements and this whole narrative is peppered with them that you know plaintiff told me this plaintiff told me that if it's not if it's not the talking parent record i can point to I, I object to it all right, it. so here's here's the issue. Um, I won't strike her testimony, but I will review the talking parent, and I will look to see what they have discussed in terms of the weight that I give to her testimony, the Thank same you. as I would do to the weight to be given to his testimony. Thank you. And um. So yeah, when it comes back to the condition of the baby, he can't talk for himself, you know? He needs um, someone who can advocate for himself. And actually, um, when I was, when I was in the, when I took, recently took him to the doctor, 
um, CPS was called. Um, I I had an. Do you have any record from CPS showing that they've done any that. kind of investigation? Um, I can obtain one. I mean, the lady gave me her card, so I can obtain something and submit it. For sure. Well, that's what you should have done by today if you're claiming there is a pending CPS investigation. Of course. Okay, it should I mean, give you an event number? Um, I, I have a reference number, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, so she used the term of... Um, you cannot okay. indicate what she said to you. Okay. Um, Okay, so there's that involvement. It's new and it's recent, um, and it's based off of the um, the November visit to the emergency room with the severe diaper rash. Um, okay. And when you go back to the desk, I'll let you give me an event number. Okay, thank you. And um, so that was in response to that and the actions that the doctor took. Um, I. They they ha have to contact. They ha had to. You cannot say. You can't give me hearsay. Yeah, I'm, it's not what they said. That you believe that CPS has, that there is a pending CPS complaint, and that you received a card, with an event number on it from a CPS person. Okay. You cannot say what, who called or why called mm -hmm. or who made the complaint or. Things of that nature. Okay. okay, so I was notified of that um, situation. Um, but overall, throughout these visitations, I've been the um, protective parent. I've been taking the baby to seek medical help when a situation is, um, when when he's, he's, he's not well. Um, and what... What is so concerning for me is the fact that he can send the baby in that condition yeah. and not say a single word to me. He won't make a comment. He won't send a single not message. not supposed to. And so I just, to me, that leads me to believe that he doesn't care about the baby. You, you've spent five days with him. You're changing his diaper, and you're, the rash is continually getting worse. Why not just t communicate that to me? It's always a surprise to me every time I get him and there, he has thrush or he's got a severe diaper rash or he's got an ear infection. I have to figure that out on my own. He won't say anything at all. Um, just recently, the diaper rash was so severe, I sent him to an ex on an exchange with um, a nice hand medication. And um, I, I had told him to use, to mix it with zinc and because, um, it took, that was that was what I was to, well okay to mix it with zinc, and so when I received the baby following that, um, you could tell um, that the diaper rash was getting better because finally he was being um, he was receiving a, a medication for it. Um, well, he was it was being treated it was being looked at, um, and um, but there was no no evidence of zinc being used in the diaper because. The nice time is a certain color, it's a yellow, zinc is white. And you can tell when a baby has, you know, when his diaper contains certain contents, you know. No, I thought the poop was white. Could that maybe have been uh, zinc? Huh? And so it's, it's so, it's concerning that the baby can't speak for himself and all of the, and he has to go through it's, it is a complicated thing, and I don't even attempt to understand it. Thanks, Kim. I sure do appreciate it. Through all of these things, um, with a parent that won't, he won't communicate what it is that's going on. Every time I receive him, it's always, it's always something I have to discover on my own. You know, I have to find, oh, I open the diaper, I change his diaper and I see, well, and I see something and I'm like, well, what, how am I going to go and care for my own child? Um, most of the time, well, at, to this point, it's a situation. You know, what she's saying, I could, I could see this being an issue. He's not communicating problems that the child, that he's having with the child. I understand that. Okay. 
can you show where you've been communicating back with him and explaining to him that, hey, when I got the child, Julian, see, I know the name. You, you don't seem to, but I do. Um, maybe when you communicate back with the father, hey, Julian's having this. I'm using this stuff right here. You see it? You want to take a picture of it? You need to get some of this. Or here, you can take this with you. you need to make sure we're putting that on every time we change the diapers. We had to do that with uh, my son every time. You get the stuff out, you got to use it every time or else he'll end up all rashed up. You know, it, it's if you're if you're going to. It, it needs to work both ways. You, you know what I mean? Um, and I, I think she seems like she was constantly setting him up for failure, which is disappointing because the failure meant that uh, Julian was having a little worse time than he really had to. And where um, I've learned what I should put on the diaper rash. I've gone to the drugstore with my mom. Um, we read the the medication. We look at um, the uh, Aquaphor and the Eucerin, and we use that on his body because um, uh, it works to treat, you know, eczema or dry skin or rashes. Um, I take him to his well visits, and I've brought it up. Um, I brought it up the the um, what I use on his body. Um, just, just to, you know, mention it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, it's unfair that the, that a one-year-old baby who can't talk has to go through all of this, all of, you know, all of these things. And there's one parent that's taking care of him. There's another parent that's sending him in a, a bad condition. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Ross? <sighs> How much time do I have around? Because I, I mean, I can reset this for another day. In the interim, I will order any CPS records that may exist. That's fine. Um, and you can finish your cross examination or do your cross examination then, if that's what you wish to do, I mean, or you can complete it tonight. And that's rather unfair to the clerks because no, no, we're really no. not supposed to keep them past 5.30 and tomorrow is a holiday, so they may have personal things they need to do as well. Let me, if, if, I, if, if I can just start my cross, I'll respect the court's time. I understand that there's some other records that the court wants to see if they exist. Um, yeah, I see it. And that's fine. Um, that, that's really up to you. I don't want to cut you off. Um, you know, I allowed the testimony to go on a little bit longer and can allow I just, people I, to do I know I'm else. not going to have this done in five minutes or seven minutes. I mean, it just, there's no way. Well, so I can go to 530, but it's difficult for me to hold them past that. They're not supposed to do overtime. Right. And if you're looking at, I, I would rather right. not I'm, start it and then stop it and start again. Right. If we're going to do it, I'd rather do it. Again. And I would think you might have an hour because I, that's what you've been doing. Well, so, if, I've got, if I've got 15, 20 minutes, I think I can get. Yeah, if awesome. you want, I, I'm whatever. not cutting you off. Right. You can proceed with cross if that's what you'd like to right, do. Thank you, Ron. Ms. Sangalaza, you just spent a lot of time talking about the fact that you, that the, the, the plaintiff doesn't communicate these things to you. Is that correct? Um, that, that, that was what you that was what you kept. That wasn't saying, was that it, wasn't my whole that, that, that wasn't my whole testimony. That things are going wrong and he just drops them off and he doesn't tell you anything that's going on. And that was part so of my testimony. I want to look. I want to look at my my exhibit uh, twelve which is the, the talking parent records. Um, Your Honor, can I object? Why? Um, you said you were going to take time to review the talking parents. Yes, but he can cross-examine today. We've talked about them and all parts of them. So, no, you can't object. He can cross-examine you about that. Okay. Okay, so if you would go to page 18 of 91. I don't know. Within Exhibit 12. Exactly. The, the difference is he knows how to lawyer. You don't. 
since you don't know how to lawyer, the judge is kind of helping you out. He knows how to lawyer, which is the best way to do it. He's going to make the point, whereas you you have to hope the judge reads and gets your point. When your when your mother was on the stand earlier, we looked at these medical records that you had submitted, and one of them was from December of 2018. So, yeah. actually, let's let's go to page 17 of 91. Yeah, I hope he tears her apart. there okay mm. so so December of 2018 right that's the date on this page that of this all these conversations that, that, that these are in December of 2018 looks like it okay and and it's a conversation about medical care right I don't know I haven't read it well so you said to the you said to the plaintiff, I'm looking at the one, two, three, four, fourth uh, statement down. It says, Karen Sangalaza on 12 9 2018 at 525 24 p.m. said, Southwest Medical, they're a huge corporation that operate with call center. You're free to give them a call. And then the next message you said, You know his name and date of birth, right? And then Nicholas says, what is his pediatrician's phone number? And you say, any Southwest Medical. That's what I thought. And if you turn to the next page. Your Honor, I'm going to object. He's just picking and well, choosing lines. I'm, 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 I'm trying Ma'am, to respect so the did you. Time. So did you. If you go to the next cross-examining. So if you go to the next cross-examination, he can do this. Right? Nicholas says, he's on your health insurance. How do I provide that info if we need to see a doctor? And where where is this? This is the top of page eighteen. That's what Nick says to you. And I am. I'm just trying to respect the court's time. She's basically said that there's she's not taking the child to one pediatrician. She goes to a group and whoever's there that day is who the child gets to see. That's not what we did. And of course I'm not an expert at all on raising kids, but to me it makes sense to find one doctor unless there's a, a, a an emergency situation. You, I would think your child needs to see one doctor. It's best for them. The doctor remembers. The doctor knows everything about your child. That's what we did. I think that's the best. Um, maybe there's some reasons you can't, but just going to a big group uh, and they have all the records, I, I don't like the sound of that. Maybe it's because of the insurance she has. I don't know. But And, and of course, like I said, she ain't been telling me nothing. She's, she's complaining that he didn't tell her. I mean, there's a lot of, you know. And what's my response to that is making assumptions shows no education. No, actually, your response is a few lines no, further down. No, my response is immediately when you say, after that. When you say, you shouldn't be taking him to any doctor. I have primary no. physical custody. My you see that? My response is immediately after that. Okay. With my name, my response is immediately after okay, that. Okay, so he says at 528. Mm -hmm. PM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's on your health insurance. How do I provide that info if we need to see a doctor? And my response and at 529. Follows? No, no, no. My okay. response follows. It's the, it's the next works. line. Okay. So, regardless, whether you want to call it a response or not, at 529, you say, you say you shouldn't be taking him to any doctor. I have primary physical custody. Right? And it also continues to say if there's an emergency, take him to the ER. Okay. I think so. So, He's trying to get information from you about the child's medical care. And at this time... And your response is, you don't get to take him to the doctor because I have primary physical custody. No, right? no, no. At this time, we... It, the judge had never ordered any... Um, anything, really. There, there was no order for... The our order was, if he was going to take the baby to the doctor, um, he can do... He can choose, choose to take him to any doctor he wants to take him, and he's going to pay out of pocket. Okay, so regardless of what the orders were, though... But that's yes, the order. You, you've characterized that my client never provided you with information, and yet... And this is just one example, and the court is going to repeat all these What information is being provided here? 
None. And that's the problem. No, no, no. What so information is your no, client no, no. Here's the thing. All right. You're not going to argue with him, okay? The, and the you're court, just going to ask a question and not argue. That's fine. That's fine. The court is going to review these records, okay. and they're going to see numerous instances like this, aren't but they? What's the Where he's question? asking you a simple question about what's the question? information that's relevant to the child, Your and Honor, you I'm choose not object. to answer. There's no question here. He's trying to ask a question it, if he would listen. Isn't that? I mean, you looked at these. His question is. Right? Is that typical of your refusal to give him medical information? That's what he's really asking. Your Honor, my child doesn't have medical insurance. There's no in information for me to give. Was he on Medicare at the time? At the time, yes. And he had medical insurance, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he had a Medicare card, didn't he? Yes, but the and order... And you could have given that information, and your answer is going to be... Well, if she doesn't give you that, you could always go take him to a pediatrician and just pay for it out of pocket. Which was that doesn't that? relieve you of the responsibility of providing the information to him, nor does it relieve him the responsibility of saying, because she didn't give it to me, I'm relieved because it's all her fault. You're both poor parents to that extent. Okay? That is not an excuse for either one of you to act in the manner with regard to questions about where's the pediatrician, where's the insurance card. Well, the judge said you could take him to anybody you want. He says, well, I don't have this. Well, the answer is it's not a justification for him. If he's concerned about the child's health, he can certainly take the child during his time to a pediatrician. If you're so concerned about his health and wanting him to do it, then one would think you would give him the insurance and encourage him to go to the same facility that you go to. So the answer is, it doesn't show very well for either one of you in terms of it. Please move on, Mr. Leifel, because we're not going to get into no, arguments. Absolutely, absolutely. Just ask your question. She will either answer it or she won't. You can make whatever argument you want. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna switch to exhibit eight. Um, you find exhibit eight. Uh, this has not been previously admitted, but it is an order entered in the case. I'm asked the court to take judicial notice of this order. Um, okay. Entered on January 31st, 2019. Hey, Creedence and Mikey. Do you have exhibit? Eight? How y'all doing today? Thanks for stopping by. Y'all need to check out their channel. I've been watching it here lately, man. They got some good stuff going on over there. If someone would post a link, I sure would appreciate it. Seriously, y'all go, go check them out. Yes. So you can admit Exhibit A, a little because bit, it's yeah. actually a document. From the I want you to go to the last paragraph on page two. It's like I've been saying, I think she's worse, but he's not a prize. Like I've been, I, I just said the same thing I've been saying. He should be taking that child to a doctor. If that aunt will pay or help him with rent, that aunt, that aunt will help him with medical bills for the baby. And it doesn't make any sense not to take the child to the doctor. You know, it made him, this would be so cut and dry if he had taken the doctor, if he had taken the child to a, a doctor himself. And showing the doctor told me to do this, and I did this, and it's cut and dry. This would be simple. You talked a lot about um, that my client didn't know what he was doing. He was ordered to take parenting classes, and um, it took him a long time to finish the parenting classes. But actually, before you look at that paragraph on page two, just at the top of page one, in the right hand corner. You see electronically filed January 31st, 2019. You see that date? What was the date that you said? January 31st, 2019. I see it. Okay. And if you go to the last paragraph on page two, it says, It is further ordered to judge and decree that Karen shall complete the six session nurturing parents and families class offered through the Clark County Department of Family Services. Here it comes. And upon completion, shall provide proof of completion to Nick. You see that? And if you turn to the third page, you see Judge Marquis' signature there? I see a signature, yeah. Okay. Uh, so on January 31st, 2019, you were ordered to complete a six-session parenting class Damn. that you never even started, correct? 
Um, not correct. I completed a parenting class, and I have a certificate. They didn't hey, file a. a um, they didn't fail to file a uh, certificate. I didn't file a certificate, but I do have one. I have one with me. I didn't file it. Hey, so parenting class. I have one. You completed the six session nurturing parents and families class. Yes, I did. So okay. And when when did you complete that class? I don't remember, but I completed the class, and I well, have this. You have the certificate with you. You can. File the certificate today if you wish to, or just show it to me. Yeah, I can show you the certificate. Just hold on. Okay. I would absolutely go and make mm -hmm. sure that's uh, a de it is right, because I'd be I'd be surprised if it was legitimate. Okay, let me. I got all messed up when this thing started acting up, so let me get. This is the last 30 minutes right here that we have for this day. That was a problem. Yes, it is. It's awesome. I want to direct your attention to Exhibit 1. It's been previously made. Our plaintiff's Exhibit 1. And specifically to the fourth page. This is an archangel. First entry at the top of the page, just to make sure we're on the same page. It says that ice you drank. Are you on that page? What? What's the time? Well, so at the top it says 8:16 a.m. Okay, I'm on that page. And then the first entry starts that ice you drank. You see that? I'm on that page. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> um, my clients previously testified and authenticated. This was a text conversation between you and Your Honor. And, and, and one more. Sorry. And what's the question first? Go ahead. So the, the third the third statement on that page that's in the lighter gray, right? It says the baby didn't even want you to hold him because he knows white people are evil. Your Honor, can I object? <clears throat> on what basis? Um, well, we already, these were already presented and the court already admonished me for them and I did apologize already. I mean, we already well, that doesn't mean matter. that there can't be evidence in this hearing. Okay. So you can object, but no, that's why I admitted the evidence over your objection, because the court may have already admonished you, but it's still something that can be considered um, in terms of all of the evidence over custody. Yep. Do you think white people are evil? No. Okay. If you read further down, you said, speaking about the child, you said he's black. His family is black, and he's going to grow up knowing he's black. He's never going to like you, LMAO. Mac, thanks for the gifted memberships. I sure do appreciate it. I'm glad he's bringing these out. Uh, it, this is delicious. You see that? Yep. Your, your baby's biracial, correct? Yeah. Okay. No, there's no sense in any um, of that. And no sense only that. half of his family is black, correct? I Actually, I don't know. I don't know his side of his dad's side of the family. Okay, but you've met some of them, right? I um, mean, his mom and his aunt. I've only, I've only, Thanks, I don't Matt. know. I've only met two people. That's okay. it. All right, but when you say his family is black, you were talking about your family, right? I, I honestly, I don't know who's on his dad's side of the family. It can be anyone. Okay. Very disingenuous. Could you skip I forward? Agree. So from there, go one, two, three more pages. The time at the top is 8.23 exactly. a.m. And the first message starts, bah, ha, ha. Do you see that? Agreed. I'm on that page. Okay. And again, this is you texting Nick, and you say, bah, ha, ha, and you're going to have a lonely, miserable Father's Day. You have no recent photos of Julian to post. 
Why didn't he have any recent photos of Julian to post? Objection, Your Honor. The context, I mean, where's the previous messages to Liz? Ma'am, you can testify to that. Just answer the question. Why didn't he have any recent photos of Julian? I don't know. Was it because sure. you weren't allowing him I'm, to see the child? I don't know why he didn't. If you skip two more pages, the top of the page says 8.26 a.m., first entry starts, really hope you lose. Can you see that? Please. I'm on that page. All right. And on the second entry there, you, you write to Nick, also take off that you're Julian's father because you're not, you're just a sperm donor, and all your friends are about to know how pathetic you are to abandon your own child because I'm going to message them who you really are. You see that? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you regard Nick as just a sperm donor? No. And then <clears throat> I want to skip two more pages, though, to the last page of this exhibit. And I, I asked your, your mother about this, and then you actually brought it up in your statement that she was texting with Nick. Um, so do, to your knowledge, was your mom... Mm -hmm. Texting Nick on occasion? This was a, honestly, this I'm not was, asking about this one specifically, no, no, no. but you mentioned it. On, so. on May 21st, uh, this I've never seen. Okay. This isn't my, my, I don't know what this is. But on May 21st, she did have a conversation with him through text message. It wasn't this, because this wasn't May 21st. Okay, so when she said she might have talked, she might have texted with him a long time ago, to your knowledge, she was texting him something in May of 2018? I don't, I don't know. What what do you do for a living right now? I'm a full time student and I work part time. Full time student studying no, right? so. political science. And how close are you to graduating? Objection relevance. What is the relevance? Uh, Your Honor, there's been a lot of uh, conversation today about what my client did or didn't pay for, what he was willing to pay for, and, and a lot of disparagement of my client's profession uh, as a professional poker player. And I want to. I, I think it's fair for the court to understand what what her okay. her view what of she's, what she's studying probably doesn't matter. But the sure, her term student. But her okay. But her date of graduation and what she intends to do after that point, I think, are, are relevant. Okay, that might go towards child support. Okay. So what what is your anticipated date of graduation? Um, it's going to be December of two thousand nineteen, next month. Okay. And what what kind of degree are you going to graduate with? Regardless, I mean, objection, relevance, that has it's nothing to do with what, I, I, mean, a, what I do now. It's relevant to potentially your ability to earn more in the future. Okay. So there's some relevance. Okay. What was so your question? Will you get what, a what sort political of science degree, a bachelor of arts yeah. degree, that's what he was asking. Okay. Yeah. Associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. It's a bachelor's. Okay. And what, what are your, you said right now you're a full-time student, and you're, you said you're working part-time mm -hmm. doing what? Um, I work in a restaurant. Okay. That's, well, I mean, what is your yeah, position? No. I serve. Okay. But objection, okay. relevance. So do you... Again, it goes to child support. Do, do you intend, the world. after you obtain your degree next month, do you, do you intend to continue working as a server part-time? or? I don't know. Okay. Anybody can help keep her. That would be great. Time, how many hours a week is that? It ranges anywhere from 20 to maybe 25. Right. What is your relationship with Steve Sansom? Uh, he's my friend. Okay. When did you meet him? Objection, relevance. What's the role of her friendship with Mr. Sansom? Well, she went on his radio show and talked a lot about my client. Objection hearsay. <coughs> so, no, if you talked about him, it would not be hearsay, it would be a party opponent. The question is, did you listen to the radio show and know that it was her? Yeah. Oh, she was introduced, yeah. I mean, it's actually on video. It's, it's on All his... Right, so what's the point? I'm just trying to figure out Okay. Whether well, her relationship with him is probably not relevant. 
her what she may have said um, on the show with regard to this case may or may not be relevant. How about this? Do you do you acknowledge that you went on Steve Sanson's veteran and politics radio show and talked about this case? Um, I, what are you referencing? Which which um, which date? Have you ever appeared on Steve Sanson's Veteran in Politics radio show? Objection, red, relevance? I mean, I can appear on I, the show. I already indicated there may be some relevance if you appeared and talked about the case, depending on what you said. So his first question is, have you done that? Yes or no? I've been on his show. Okay. And did you talk about this case on that show? I talked about my relationship with the plaintiff. Um, I spoke about a previous um, my a previous experience with a previous judge. I didn't reference the case number. I didn't reference the case name or anything like that. But you did mention my client's name, correct? No, <laughs> nope, not at all. Okay. But you said you were speaking about your relationship with, you admit that you were at least speaking about your relationship Objection with relevance. Ma'am, I've already answered that three times now. Objecting the fourth time isn't going to make any difference. I said that he could inquire into it. Okay. So there's some relevance. So you need to answer the question. I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I'm just, I'm repeating what you just told me. You said you spoke about your relationship with the plaintiff, right? I don't. You know, I don't remember. And you admitted on that show that... Now she says she doesn't remember, so if she doesn't remember... Okay. Yeah. Your Honor, I think just in the interest of everyone's time, this is probably... A you won't be able to wrap up by 5.30. Uh, by 5.30? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I promised the court 15 minutes, and that, and that was 20 minutes ago. No, I'll give so. it to 5.30, because that's... Okay. There's some leeway to Got go it. to 5.30. Beyond <coughs> that, it becomes much more difficult from a logistical point of view. All right. I'm hoping that the judge is paying attention. When Julian was... An infant. You co-slept with him, correct? I don't remember. Oh, God. How can she say that? Unbelievable. It, this was a huge deal. It was thoroughly discussed. The judge actually told her, you're doing that? You're co-sleeping? That can kill your baby. Don't do it. Now she doesn't remember, so that's her thing. Any question that she uh, is asked that she doesn't like, she doesn't remember. That's incredible. Selected. In the interest of time, you know, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that the court take judicial notice of the video recordings of the first three hearings in this case. Wherein, oh yeah, the is defendant, it your representation that at those hearings she personally made a representation to the court or testified that she was co-sleeping and was admonished against doing so? Well, and what she was admonished right. yes. is not my question. Yes, that she. If you wish me to that, listen to a hearing to see if she actually made such a statement, then. I will listen for that limited purpose only. No. Oh, yeah. And I would ask that if you believe that to be true, you supply me with the dates and the video area. You don't have to do that now. You can do that subsequently Perfect. before the next. I would supply the, uh, the judge with uh, maybe a minute or two ahead of time so that the judge can get all the context um, 
Absolutely. Oops. Register of action somewhere. It would be. You don't have to do it okay, now. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Making mine, Roz. I don't like people's lie. I don't like it at all. Does well, there is does a good Julian outcome. currently have medical insurance coverage of any kind? No. No Medicaid. No Medicaid. No, my answer is no. He has no medical insurance of any kind. No. Okay. I already answered the question. Okay. So when you take him to, you know, you submit some medical records when you've taken him to the doctor, do you pay cash? They don't. They don't ask me for it because it's the emergency room. They don't ask me for anything. They just ask. His name, his date of birth, so he just gets free, and free and medical treatment. and medical bills, medical proceed like bills will be sent is what they say. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm yet to wait for those. Did he have insurance back in December of 2018? I don't remember. Did you ever get a bill from this December 2018? I visit? don't I don't remember. Yeah, I would be surprised. Yeah. You said that he's been to the uh, the doctor as recently as just earlier this month, correct? He's been to an ER. Okay. Did you did you notify the plaintiff that he was going to the ER or had been to the ER? I don't remember. Okay. I mean, is it in the talking parent records? Did you let him know? I there? mean. When when you submitted these pair of records before he went to the doctor. Okay. Well, I mean, do you, it was. Just I a, don't know. You said it was just a week ago. Thanks. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Did you do you recall? Do you remember? Yes, answer the question. Okay. No further questions, ah. So now we can do what's called redirect, which simply means if you'd like to clarify any point that he made on cross examination, you may do so. Um, no, no redirect, Your Honor. Thank you. Now she wants to get okay. down as quick as that she will can. Include then your witnesses, am I correct? Yep. Okay. You step down and you can keep your certificate that you say you have with you today. Oh, you show that to opposing guarantee. counsel. I think that, okay. that would have been my statement. Your Honor, I'd like to ask more questions, but it's obvious that anything that I ask that she doesn't want to answer, she's simply going to say she doesn't remember. So, yeah, we're just, I, I really ask the judge to watch everything that's happened up to here so that you can see what, uh, what we've been dealing with. Marsha would make a copy. I have copies if you want to have That's them. That's fine. And do you have two there? I have two copies. All right. So if you give one to Mr. Lytle. And then, Your Honor, I've yet to receive a copy of her certificate. Well, just if I can put Mr. Rosello back on the stand for two minutes, I can have him authenticate. It's in the exhibits today. I can have him authenticate. That's that. fine. And that can be admitted as well. Okay. Thanks, Ricky. Okay. So the record reflects the parenting project. Um, was completed on August 13th, 2019. Yeah. Um, so I'm not a lawyer. I ain't got patience. So the copy will be marked as um, defendants next in order and admitted. Yeah. Must that be sworn in? No, no, you're already no, sworn in. Still under oath. If you would um, just look at plaintiff's exhibit four, please. Oh my goodness. No, I hate to hear that, Evan. That's hard, man. That is really hard. You're definitely going to be in our prayers, man. I really hate to hear that. Can 
We'll let him just identify it first okay. and then we'll find out. Okay, go ahead. Can you identify exhibit four? I can. What is it? This is my certificate from completing baby care class in the fall of 2018. What's the date on it? It's yeah. a photograph of the certificate. Right. Is what's the date on it? Yes, it's a photograph. Yeah. And what's the date? Of the, the date is December 1, 2018. Okay, and is this the same photograph that you presented to Judge Markey? Has he been admitted? He's laying the foundation. And is this the same photograph that you presented to Judge Marquis as proof of your completion in the report? Yes. Uh, I asked now, what's your objection to its admission? Um, it's a picture. It's not the actual certificate. Well, yours is a photocopy, and it looks like the actual certificate. So um, there's nothing about it that would indicate to me that somehow it's been concocted or manufactured or something of that nature. It looks just like yours. Um, so it's just a photograph instead of a photocopy. So your objection is overruled. And exhibit four is it? Proposed exhibit four is now admitted. Yeah, they're they're very trying. I, I don't have any further rebuttal questions. All right. Yeah. So may I go back? You may go back. Yes, you may, sir. So, um, Miss uh, Sangalaza, do you have your card with the CPS case number that you believe applies? Yeah, this is an over, yeah. Okay, so I've got the referral number. This is written by the doctor and this is what he gave me. And then I have the card that the CPS lady gave. She gave me her card. So, so the doctor gave you a referral number to CPS? Yes. I think the judge is just trying to make sure that uh, her eventual ruling in this case, uh, I hope, is not, she's not able to appeal it and overturn it. She's doing everything she can to make sure that uh, this stands. I don't think I have the card, the card with me, but um, I can file it. Imagine that. It's probably, I don't know if it's at home. All right, so this is what I would like you to do. Mm -hmm. I would like you to. Yeah, I've talked to some of the veterans that, I have several veterans that work for me, and they tell me what the, uh, dealing with the VA is like. Um, I suggest y'all, y'all give that a shot and see what you think. I know what they think make a photocopy of the card uh -huh. and email it to the department law clerk okay. and I want you to CC that email to Mr. Michael. Okay. The department law clerk will get it to me and you have till um, 10 a.m. on Monday to do that. Okay. okay. What is the um, email for the department law clerk? I mean, I don't know which clerk it's going to. I think it's just the department. Exactly. It's just Department Q Law Clerk at ClarkCountyCourts.nav, I think. But U.S. Or dot U.S. Is that what it is? So. Yes, but exactly what is the email so she knows. Department fully spelled out. Uh, 
D E P T Q. You're right, Perry. Let's, let's get off of this. At Clark County Courts. Dot us. Okay. Okay, and what's uh, Mr. Lytle's email? I assume that you've received that in the past from communications, <laughs> but Mr. Lytle will give, oh, we'll it to give her you. another card. No, no, no. I don't need a card. Just an email to confirm. She's that. wanting that. No, no. He's going to give you the card because it's got the email on it. Okay. That's why he wants to make sure. So I know that yeah. the card was given to okay, her. Okay, so this is mine. I have this email. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to confirm. To make it that it was the same meal meal right. we've had previously. That's fine. All right. So when we come back, I will have read uh, those documents that yes. I didn't have time to read today since you both want me to read in more in depth the um, documents. And I will, in the interim, ask CPS, based upon the information you supply, what, if anything, they have under that event number. And for them to supply the records to me, then those records are not given to the parties, but right. both parties can review them, and then they're filed as a left side filing, again, so it's not part of the public record, but it is part of the court record, okay? CPS filings are never part of the public record. Um, so, in terms of finding a time period for coming back to court, um, I can do it on the morning of December 18th or the morning of December 19th. Because we need to give enough time at least for mm -hmm. CPS to be notified and get some response. I'm out of town on the 18th. Um, I would be available on the 19th. Okay. Are you available on the 19th, ma'am, in the morning? Um, is there, is there, that's the week of my graduation, so I just... The week, huh? I don't know how I'd be able to handle it. You know, Graduation's um, a whole week, and you got to take it all off? Between I can go into January, but that's... The, in other words, the 19th is the last date that's available before the end of the year. I can go to January 6th. We're fine in January on our side. Let's go on December 19th. I'll have to I'm just letting you know. Mm -hmm. um, so December the 19th. And it is uh, Mr. Rifle. Um, I would prefer to do it at 10 a.m. Because we have to find a courtroom for me to use. So I don't know what courtroom it will be in. Okay. Um, what? I think they're they're actually Does that splitting still custody. Work with so. you, or do you have ten or eleven o'clock appearances? Uh, I I'm you're free, free that whole morning. Yeah, so. Not today. So I'll make Sorry. it ten a.m. There'll be no additional testimony. I'll simply have the CPS records, and then um, if I get them early enough, where I have. I, I did not go to college, so I don't know anything about all this. Maybe it is a big deal. I don't know. Um, uh, I I don't understand it. Read them. I will be prepared to render an oral decision that day. If I don't get them early enough, then you may have to wait. I, I, would, have I would like the opportunity to submit closing, even if it's in writing. Um, you can both do that if you'd like to submit a seven-page closing statement that summarizes the evidence and why you think that evidence supports your point of view. Actually, I'll even make I it ten so. pages. Thank you. Each of you should have that document done um, by December the 13th. Sure. Okay. Submitted, like filed and uh, served on the other party? Yes. Mm -hmm. December, sorry, okay? December 13th, because I'll have to have read it before the 19th. So. Okay. Is there. I, this is hard. I'm sorry. It's just that's the week of my final. Uh, so that's why 
if you would prefer to go to January 6th so that you're past your finals for all of this, and um, I, I'm okay with that. You, you just kind of have to decide. I can't. Um, just from no any complaint from November 18th forward. I don't believe there's any others. I don't either. Um, let's let's stay with December. I don't want to postpone. Okay. Yep. All right. The department will find a courtroom and they'll notify you where the proceedings will be. All right. Perfect. All right. Exactly. So we'll be in recess, and you all have a pleasant Thanksgiving. Thank you. You as well. Okay, um, that was interesting. Um, I have the stuff for the 19th. I'm not going to be able to do it today, but as JoJo was just asking, asking, my plan is to be on tomorrow, so I may not take a day off this week. It's it's fine. Um, I'm going to be driving back to Savannah tomorrow, so I should be able to do that and hopefully finish this one. I have three more videos plus her interview. Um, that they were just talking about on the veterans and politics. So if y'all like, I think maybe we do that interview and then finish up these, uh, excuse me, these last three videos. And they're all from uh, December the 19th. So I think that'll be the right way to do it. I think we can probably get that, all that in tomorrow night, I think. So uh, that should fin finish up what I have. Um, I'm not aware of any other videos that are available since then. So if anyone knows of something that uh, anytime these people have been in court that's out there since the uh, since uh, 2019, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to have it and we'll keep watching it. Um, I'm really curious to see where these people are right now. I, I, I really think there's going to be a problem with parental alienation. I can't see her not bad talking to daddy. Um, day in and day out. Um, I'd, I'd be really concerned about that, but that's just going to be awful. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Also, if y'all have any suggestions for the next topic, please let me know. I've gotten a couple here. Um, I got, I've already downloaded and I was thinking about, hold on just a second. Let me look it up. Um, well, this thing's going to be, Difficult. No, this thing is just going to be difficult today, isn't it? Well, I can't find it now. I've 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 found a couple of them and I've downloaded them. Um, I got like the shawl matter. Anyway, uh, if there's anything y'all can think of, it'd be best if you could uh could email it to me. And again, that's flat green. I'll put it in the chat at yahoo.com don't shoot me an email with it i would appreciate it um I, I'm, I'm also trying to uh to decide if we stay uh in the family courts or maybe we don't look at some type of a trial um i'm not sure uh i know several people have been bothered by some of these that we're doing um it is kind of hard to watch some of this family stuff but uh uh, it might be worth it to, to do some type of a trial or something that we can, uh, you know, watch every little bit of criminal. Yeah, whatever. Y'all let me know what you want to watch and uh, we'll go from there. OK, well, I sure do appreciate it. I'm glad y'all could stop by. I certainly hope y'all enjoy and look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow evening. Y'all have a good one.